Have you ever taken a math class and the number pi just appears out of nowhere? It's always a pleasant surprise, like running into an old friend, but it makes you wonder why it shows up so often. In my field, combinatorics, the study of counting things, we have our own old friend who shows up in surprising places, the Catalan numbers. The Catalan numbers are a sequence of integers, c sub n, that shows up shockingly often in counting problems. MIT professor Richard Stanley has documented over 200 places that they show up, and it's fair to say that this is the most important sequence in all of combinatorics. So where do they come from? Dick paths. A dick path, or mountain range, is a sequence of up steps and down steps that start and end on the x-axis, but never go below. Every path has an equal number of up steps and down steps, so we define the nth Catalan number as the number of dick paths with n up steps. But these numbers describe so much more than just dick paths. In this video, we're going to look at three more places out of the hundreds that our friend shows up, and I'm going to explain why it keeps showing up. Our next encounter with the Catalan numbers comes in the form of binary trees. A full binary tree is either just a node, or it's a node with a left and a right child, each of which is also a full binary tree. If you start to count them up, you'll notice that the number of full binary trees with 2n plus 1 nodes is equal to the nth Catalan number. If I ask you to explain why the number of dick paths and the number of full binary trees was the same, your first instinct might be to find a formula for the number of dick paths and find a formula for the number of full binary trees and go, look here, it's the same formula. But this would be a bit unsatisfying. It would tell us that these two objects are counted by the same numbers, but it doesn't tell us why they should have the same formula. That is, there should be some way to match up binary trees and dick paths, and there is. Feel free to pause the video and see if you can find one. Okay, here's how to build a binary tree from a dick path. Notice that every dick path is either empty, that is, containing no steps at all, or it has a final mountain, where it leaves the x-axis for the last time. But what is a mountain? It's a step up, followed by some path that starts and ends at the same y-level without going below, and then a step down. In other words, it's a dick path with legs on either side. Finally, here's our recursive algorithm for how to construct a binary tree from a dick path. If your path is empty, assign it to the binary tree that's just a single node. Otherwise, make a tree whose left child is the tree you get by applying our algorithm to the path before the final mountain, and whose right child is the tree you get by applying our algorithm to the final mountain with its legs cut off. I think binary trees provide a really nice explanation for why the sequence is so ubiquitous. Anytime you're counting objects that decompose into two of that same type of object, you'll get a binary tree-like structure, and hence Catalan many objects. But that structure might be hidden a bit, like with the dick paths. See if you can spot the binary tree structure in our next problem. So you're looking through your old math notes, but to your dismay, some trickster has erased all of the parentheses. How many ways could you put them back in? To study this problem, let's try to understand a particular parenthesized expression. In the outermost layer, we're multiplying a left and a right expression. Unsurprisingly, then, we can make the left child the left expression and the right child the right expression. And since the children themselves are parenthesized expressions, we can repeat this process and get a full binary tree. Going from a tree back to a parenthesized expression is just as easy. Label the nodes in your tree from left to right with the symbols in your expression. Then, at each node, make its left expression its left child, and its right expression its right child. Since we have a correspondence between parenthetizations with n operations and full binary trees with 2n plus 1 nodes, we know there must be c sub n ways to parenthesize an expression. Parenthetizations are intimately related to an important object in math and physics called the associahedron, but that's a story for another time. The last place we meet our friend for today comes with a familiar face. Euler. The Catalan numbers were actually originally discovered by Euler, but follow the long tradition in math of things being named after the first person after Euler to discover them. Euler discovered the numbers by counting triangulations of convex polygons. To triangulate a polygon, you want to partition it into triangles without adding any new vertices. Triangulations show up all over computer science, and especially in computer graphics. If you start counting up all the ways you can triangulate an n-gon, you'll notice quickly that our friend is back. But I don't see any obvious binary tree structure on the triangulations. 
Instead, we're going to match up the triangulations with parenthetizations. Pick an edge and color it red. Starting after the red edge, go around counterclockwise labeling the remaining edges. Now, stretch out the polygon so the edges lay flat. The triangulation is now a bunch of arcs grouping the edges together. The left edge of an arc acts like a left parenthesis, and the right edge acts like a right parenthesis. And voila! You have a parenthetization. At the start of the video, we flashed a formula for the Catalan numbers, and if you've stuck around this long, you might appreciate the following beautiful proof. As we know, C sub n is the number of full binary trees with 2n plus 1 total nodes. Each tree has n plus 1 leaves, that is, nodes with no children. So there's n plus 1 factorial ways of ordering the leaves from 1 to n plus 1. I'm going to call these leaf-labeled binary trees, or LLBs for short. To find a formula for C sub n, we're going to count the number of LLBs in a different way. We can build an LLB with 2n plus 3 nodes from one with 2n plus 1 nodes as follows. Take any node and replace it with a tree whose left or right child is the tree starting with that node, and whose other child is a leaf labeled n plus 1. Every LLB can be obtained through a unique sequence of choices in this process, starting with just a single node. So all we have to do is count how many ways you can build a sequence. On a tree with 2n plus 1 nodes, we choose a node and a direction, left or right, giving us 2 times 2n plus 1 choices. Then there are 2 times 1, times 2 times 3, times 2 times 5, etc. total LLBs, and dividing by n plus 1 factorial, we recover the formula for the Catalan numbers. I hope by now you agree that this is an amazing sequence, and that the Catalan numbers are your new best friend.